PayPal is in seriously hot water. Last week, the founder of PayPal, Elon Musk, warned the world that the company's new policies, quote, go against everything that I believe in. So it's not surprising that in just the past year, PayPal stock prices have fallen by two thirds and their reputation being irreversibly damaged. But PayPal wasn't always in shambles. Just a couple of years ago, and PayPal was one of the most powerful companies in the world, with its original founding team spawning the richest 13 men in Silicon Valley. With all of these men leaving PayPal to create new companies like Tesla, LinkedIn, Yelp, and even YouTube. And PayPal was the creation of all of these top minds, becoming instrumental in creating the online landscape we know today. However, in just the last two years, this is a whole different story. With their stock price falling from over $290 a share to just $80, this is a drop of over 70%, which is why PayPal, a company that has continually grown, has now finally had to scale back their goals for the next few years, admitting that they're not going to reach their future targets. So what caused such a powerful company to come crashing down so quickly? And why has the public turned against PayPal? Well, to answer this, we need to understand what changed to PayPal. You see, one of the key reasons PayPal was originally so successful was due to the founders of PayPal, Peter Thiel, Max Levitchin, and Luke Nosk. Known as Co-Infinity in 1998, the company would go on to merge with Elon Musk's competitor company, X.com, where it was renamed as PayPal. All the people behind this new merged company were extremely ambitious men, many of whom would later become billionaires. With their collective ambition, intellect, and vision, they all saw immense potential for PayPal. And it was this this vision for the company that would transform the world. Because before PayPal existed, there was no way of buying things online without physical checks and money orders. But PayPal solved this problem without inventing their own currency like their competitors. Instead, they worked through institutions that everyone already trusted, email, banks, and the US dollar. And it worked spectacularly well. As more and more people discovered PayPal, more and more money would flow through it. But it wasn't just the ambition that grew PayPal. Much of their success back then was built up from their reputation. Part of this was because of their customer service and their long-term thinking. This combining force to do the utmost for their customers in a long-term vision meant that PayPal would be one of the first companies in the world to use captures to prevent online fraud. We're talking about eight years before Google would even use them. And it was these sorts of genius innovations that would keep PayPal's customers safe. But as the years went on and the founder's vision for the company faded, the upper management at PayPal became increasingly complacent and big problems were bubbling up from the surface. However, meanwhile, things seemed great. The company was exploding in growth. Just three years after its founding, the company was handling around $3 billion in payments with around 189,000 transactions a day. And yet even with these astounding figures, PayPal decided that they were gonna take the company public. It might have seemed like an odd move at first, but you see PayPal had never actually been profitable and they needed these venture capital investments to survive. Because like all big tech companies, PayPal was trying to scale up as quickly as possible and become irreplaceable in the booming online markets. And this is why the potential of PayPal was just so incredible because they were perfectly positioned to have a monopoly on transactions over the entire internet. With just minuscule fees, they could make billions in profits. And this hope fueled massive investments. Within PayPal's first day on the stock exchange, they had already raised over $61 million. But this wasn't even the biggest vote of confidence PayPal would receive. Just a year later, eBay bought PayPal for $1.5 billion in stock. And soon enough, PayPal became eBay's recommended transaction service, letting them tap into a mountain of guaranteed business. Because back in the early 2000s, PayPal PayPal and eBay's growth were following the exact same trajectory. Both were revolutionary startups that were taking the world by storm, and together they would be unstoppable. PayPal would give eBay the perfect protection for their customers, all while revolutionizing online shopping for the masses. And in return, PayPal would expand its reputation, growing its user base by millions. And whilst this move would be incredibly important for PayPal's success, this would also be the first reason for PayPal's downfall. But the consequences of this would be slow to show. However, to anyone looking, it would have been clear from the start, because when eBay bought the company, nearly all the upper management jumped ship. Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, pretty much all of the men who had founded PayPal and turned it into a billion dollar company just vanished showing that they just didn't have any interest in working under eBay. Instead, they would use the hundreds of millions generated from the sale to invest into other companies and ideas. And so when PayPal fell under the control of eBay, the company would radically change. But for now, this didn't matter. Under eBay, PayPal would steadily grow larger and larger. It was a slow pace of growth, but what it did give PayPal was an incredibly strong user base. eBay slowly spread a PayPal across the world. When eBay grew, PayPal grew. And by the time 2010 rolled around, PayPal had 100 million users in 190 different markets using 20 
25 separate currencies, but the ticking time bomb was about to explode. The growth was catching up to the company, and by early 2010, PayPal was getting too big. Not for themselves, of course, but for eBay. By the end of 2012, PayPal accounted for 40% of eBay's total revenue, processing over $145 billion in transactions. So in 2014, the inevitable happened and eBay split from PayPal, becoming its own independent company. But when it became independent, PayPal would suddenly have a lot more problems to deal with, and it was these exact problems that would be instrumental in PayPal's imminent collapse. The first of these problems was security. PayPal had been dealing with fraud problems on its platform for years. Now, as we mentioned before, PayPal was inventing a lot of great protection methods for their customers. But one thing PayPal couldn't deal with was the rise in cybercrime. In fact, very early on, they were losing millions of dollars a year to small attacks, leading them to invest heavily in security measures. But over the years, some of these measures haven't been enough and have actually introduced new weaknesses. In 2014, for example, researchers found that PayPal PayPal's two-factor authentication system had been easily exploitable since it was introduced six years earlier. It all revolved around PayPal's mobile app. When someone with two-factor authentication logged on, the app would believe they were properly logged on for a moment before demanding the second level of security. But if you put the phone in airplane mode during this period, then turned it off again a second later, it would completely fool the system into thinking that you had logged on. And this bug was around for years, without anyone at PayPal catching on, and the researchers who discovered it were easily able to write a script that replicated it, making the process that much easier to exploit. This security problem was a warning to PayPal that they couldn't take security too lightly, but of course they didn't listen, and this had an awful effect on the reputation of security and convenience that PayPal had been built on. Every security breach and weaknesses that were found detracted from its reputation, and this wasn't the only thing slowly eating away at PayPal. On top of the security risks were the awful customer reviews they were getting, as their focus on prioritizing the users began to dwindle once they monopolized the industry. And by 2016, PayPal was among the worst rated companies in the world it had a one-star rating on consumer affairs, with articles calling it, quote, the most reviled online company in the country. Not only were PayPal having problems with security, they were also failing with their customer service in a huge way. Reviews of the time showed that the company was notorious for siding with scammers and holding onto people's money. There were just thousands of stories of PayPal ignoring or even protecting scammers on its platform. Now, it's understandable for a company to have some negative reviews, if they're outweighed by positive ones. But when nearly 95% of your reviews give the lowest rating, you know something's wrong. Both of these problems were a growing issue, and PayPal's growth would stagnate for years even after the eBay deal. From mid-2015 to mid-2017, PayPal's stock sat at pretty much the same value, with only slight rises and dips. But starting from around mid-2017 until around 2020, PayPal looked like they were going to get their second wind, with their stock doubling in value during the latter half of the year, rising from $40 to roughly $75 a share. And the next years were even better, with PayPal reaching $110 a share by 2020. So what explains this random sudden growth? growth. Well, similar to its growth as a startup, PayPal looked like it had a lot of potential. But this time, PayPal wasn't just a high potential startup, the potential was in how strong their monopoly was. You see, 2017 saw massive growth for PayPal, as they secured access to over 100 million new customers in China. And on top of this regional expansion were the acquisitions that PayPal made. They bought companies like TIO Networks and iZettle, both competitors that offered the same service that PayPal did. And because of this, everyone thought they were looking at the next big tech monopoly, a company that was set to rival the likes of Google, Amazon and Meta. And to achieve this, PayPal did spread itself thin, just like the early days, looking to access every bit of the market that they could. And again, like the early days, this paid dividends, especially when the pandemic came around the corner, as much of the world was forced inside, where online business and e-commerce flourished, which obviously meant that a lot more people were using PayPal. And so inevitably, their stock prices and revenue soared. In the first months of the pandemic, PayPal's revenue jumped up by 22% and over 20 million new users joined the platform. And across the duration of the pandemic, PayPal will continue to grow more and more. In just a year and a half, their stock rose to a massive $300 a share. PayPal was unstoppable. But the final flaw in PayPal's business model was going to bring down the whole house of cards. But before we continue, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Guardio. Guardio is a web extension that you can add to any browser to protect you from cyber threats. You see, Guardio acts as the first line of defense by detecting threats before they reach your browser and cause harm, unlike traditional solutions that only remove threats once they're on your device. Which is so important because in the past, I've seen friends click on the wrong website link or accidentally download dangerous things, and by doing this, they've had their computers destroyed with viruses. Which is why Guardio is so essential in preventing this from happening in the first place. After you've installed Guardio, 
they'll perform a free security scan that detects existing threats found on your browser. After completing the scan, you can continue on to a 7 day free trial to remove existing threats and enable real time protection. And Guardia users both free and premium can access their dashboard at any time to run the scan and track their activity. And even better is that this identity monitoring is cross platform, so if you sign up through your mobile, you will get real time alerts once your data is breached or leaked, meaning that you can take action immediately. Which is why Guardia is so important to keep your information secure and have real time protection and alerts. And today you can start with a free security scan it only takes 30 seconds, being trusted by over 1 million users. And right now they have an exclusive offer for you guys, with 20% off the monthly subscription. So if you want a clean and secure browsing experience, again go to guard.io slash moon, or click the link in the description and check out their affordable premium plan for full protection. Now back to the video. You see, on top of the security and customer service problems that never went away, PayPal started to make some very controversial political decisions, and this would become the second reason for PayPal's downfall. Instead of focusing on customer service, they were now focusing on virtue signaling. As we all know, the service PayPal provides is purely financial, either moving money from one account to another or offering loans. But at some point, PayPal started to believe that it had the authority to push its worldview onto its customers. This began with PayPal banning some controversial figures off its platform. Niche political groups would often find their funds frozen, and in 2018, PayPal would very infamously ban someone for their political views, the man known for gay frogs. Now ostensibly, it seemed like they were just joining in with all the other big tech platforms, but when you really think about it, PayPal banning people for their political views is far more sinister than any other big tech censorship, because we're talking about people's hard earned money here. And over the following years, PayPal would take this to a whole new level, and this is when PayPal's public reputation would hit an all time low. It all started in 2021 when they publicly announced that they were joining forces with the ADL, otherwise known as the Anti-Defamation League, supposedly under the guise of protecting marginalized communities. They stated that they would work with the ADL to cut the revenue funds of quote, extremist and hate groups. But really this meant that PayPal would freeze the funds of anyone who the ADL told them to. And if we really consider the recent history of ADL, this could mean almost anyone. I mean, we're talking about an organization that went after PewDiePie of all people, going so far as to commend Disney when they dropped him from their brand in 2017. And in 2020, an open letter was signed by a coalition of even progressive organizations calling for a boycott on the ADL. This is how extreme left the ADL truly is. And they clearly don't have a clean record on morality, but PayPal is entrusting them with the company's future decisions and who they stop money going to. Yes, a multi-billion big tech platform is siding with the extreme left, and this problem would have disastrous consequences. And we'll get onto the consequences of this very shortly. But it's also important to note that at the exact at the same time, PayPal's business model was beginning to fall apart. You see, with their incredible growth during the pandemic, it seemed like their monopoly plans were working. But instead of properly managing their growth, PayPal spread themselves way too thin, and today they are losing massive amounts of growth compensating for it. And that's why during the time that PayPal was partnering with the ADL, PayPal's monopoly plans were falling apart. By around the end of 2021, PayPal's revenue would begin to be cut by half. And with this came many more burgeoning alternatives. And worse still, Google, Amazon and Apple have all released some versions of PayPal services, whether it be Apple Pay, Google Pay, or any of the other miscellany of services. And it's by using things like Apple Pay that these big companies have integrated their own payment transaction methods into the greater span of their company. And that's why Apple and Google make it a lot easier to use their services than PayPal on their smartphones. And for many years, PayPal was the only payment transaction method that these big companies relied on. But now it's becoming clear that PayPal is quickly losing their monopoly, and they really don't offer much else to the market. In fact, now it seems like PayPal is negatively affecting the market, and instead of being user orientated, PayPal is now making their services less and less desirable for their users. Most notably, the old issue of security has cropped up once again. You see, in 2021, PayPal was so desperate to sustain their growth that they turned to a strategy that they'd never used before, sign-up incentives. Beginning in late 2021, PayPal offered a free $10 to anyone who made a new account. With the proper measures taken against bot accounts, this could have been a great move. And at first, it did seem like it was. PayPal suddenly had an influx of millions of new accounts. But a few months later, PayPal made a shocking discovery. Over 4.5 million of the new accounts were fraudulent. Hackers around the world had found ways to bypass PayPal's new user checks and use botnets to make thousands of fake accounts. 
and all of these accounts were given the sign-up incentive, amounting to tens of millions in losses for PayPal. But it was possibly the damage to their reputation that stung the most, so much so that PayPal had to scale back their new user goals, abandoning a pledge to get 750 million active users by 2025. The breach meant that what they thought were 4.4 million new users were actually just a leech on them instead. And coupled with the generally lackluster growth and ambition, and PayPal is left lacking. And it's problems like these that have plagued PayPal. They used to be famed for their customer service. But all these controversies in just the last two years have really put into question, does PayPal actually care about its customers? And trust me when I say it only gets worse from here. In September of 2022, PayPal would begin banning accounts of the Free Speech Union, an organization that simply supports academics that have been silenced for their opinions and promote general free speech in society. And so with PayPal's far left views, they would ban this organization which really didn't seem very business savvy and more politically motivated. Now of course, this move was met with criticism from all sides of the political spectrum, and so they eventually reinstated the accounts. But you'd think they'd learn from this, but clearly they didn't. Just a month later in early October, PayPal released a new acceptable use policy, which was pretty much a document detailing what people can and can't do on its platform. Most of it seemed like the usual legal stuff, but among the new additions was a pledge to fine users $2,500 if they spread, quote, misinformation information. And needless to say, the backlash was incredible. David Marcus, a former president of PayPal, tweeted this, PayPal's new AUP goes against everything I believe in. A private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with. Insanity. And Elon Musk was quick to agree, also deriding the company for its massive blunder. And rightly so, it's ridiculous that PayPal believes that they can take people's money for the wrong opinions. And anyway, who decided what is and what isn't misinformation anyway? Since when did they get the moral political authority over their users. It wasn't just woke nonsense. This was a direct middle finger to their customers, and people across the world agreed. After PayPal threatened to take people's money, the world reacted. The amount of Google searches for quote, delete PayPal rose nearly 1,400% in the day after the announcement, and their stock crashed a further 6% as a result of the announcement. Of course, once realizing what a total disaster this was, PayPal would make a quick U-turn on their announcement. But you see, the thing is, they only did this once they saw the damage this was doing to their bottom line. If it wasn't for the backlash, PayPal would have happily continued with this. It seemed like this was a desperate attempt to fit into the woke narrative. Either that, or PayPal was just trying to increase their control over their users, whilst virtue signaling to increase their ESG score and look good to the public. But instead, this turned out to be just another huge mistake in a long line of massive mistakes in just the last two years. And this one seemed to be the final straw. Judging by the scathing comments from former founders and executives of PayPal, the company has quite clearly lost its way. With PayPal's lack of security, failed business plan, and now their threats to steal people's money and their desecration of free speech has left the company's reputation in tatters, and only time will tell how long they have left. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more controversial videos that I can't release to the public, consider joining the channel. For just $5.99 a month, you'll have access to monthly exclusive videos not released to the public, where you can watch our videos on Ted Kaczynski and our Mr. Robot series review, and soon we'll be releasing a video on the man behind gay frogs. In addition to the exclusive videos, you'll also have access to my private Discord group. All you have to do is click the join button below or click the link in the description.